Yo, what's going on, A-Push people? We got a new video for you today in which I will examine key documents from period five. Now, I will break down different political cartoons and documents that you should be familiar with from period five that could potentially appear on any exam in the form of a prompt for multiple choice or short answer question. So I will go through these and hopefully you will have a better understanding of these documents from period number five. All right, let's start off talking about William Lloyd Garrison. Now, even though he started in 1831 with his newspaper, The Liberator, this dude was still around in the 1860s. So he is a part of period five. So who was he? Well, he was the publisher, as I mentioned, of The Liberator. And this was an abolitionist newspaper. Now, here is, an, a, doc, here is a document that you could encounter. And it says, I am aware that many object to the severity of my language, but is there not cause for severity? I will be as harsh as truth and as uncompromising as justice. On this subject, I do not wish to think or speak or write with moderation. No, no. Tell a man whose house is on fire to give a moderate alarm. But urge me not to use moderation in a cause like the present. I am in earnest. I will not equivocate. I will not excuse. I will not retreat a single inch. And I will be heard. So what are some possible multiple choice and short answer tips for this document? Well, this is an example of abolitionism in the North, even though this was a minority. It specifically mentions in the new curriculum how the abolitionist movement was a minority movement in the North. And this is also an example of using fierce arguments against the institution of slavery. Something else that could be asked is who would agree with him? And that would be Northern abolitionists who would most likely not support William Lloyd Garrison's message. Perhaps somebody like Southern plantation owners. All right, the next one, I'm sure you've seen this picture before. This deals with Manifest Destiny. It was created by John Gast. It is titled American Progress in 1872. So what do we notice? Every time I look at this painting, I notice something else. You see Columbia, this image of America is moving westward with telegraph lines. So that implies that the government is encouraging westward expansion. You see many Americans are moving westward towards darkness. Notice that there is light over in the top right hand side of this painting and there is darkness on the left hand side and Columbia is moving towards the darkness assuming she will bring the light with her. You also notice that Native Americans on the left-hand side are being moved further west. That is a major implication of westward expansion. So what are the implications of this cartoon? Well, Manifest Destiny is seen as positive, and some possible multiple choice and short answer tips you should be familiar with. The environmental transformation of westward expansion. What impacts did that have? You have the railroads being built, the bison or buffalo being decimated. You have, you have the near extinction of the buffalo. They were down to less than 1,000 at one point in U.S. history. What is the impact on different groups of people, including Native Americans? Many of them lost their land. They were forced onto reservations. They were forced onto 160 acres of land under the Dawes Act. What is the impact on families as they move west? And what were ways the government encouraged expansion? Well, you have the Homestead Act from 1862, which provided 160 acres of land. And you also have railroad subsidies to railroad companies, which encouraged them to build railroad. These are just a few of the possible answer choices you may see, but definitely be familiar with this painting. All right, let's go over to the Wilmot Proviso. It was an amendment that was to a bill that was authored by David Wilmot. It proposed banning slavery in the Mexican session land. So what exactly did it say? It said provided that as an express and fundamental condition to the acquisition of any territory from the Republic of Mexico by the United States, so it's talking about any land the U.S. gains from the Mexican-American War, by virtue of any treaty which may be negotiated between them, and to the use of by the executive of the monies herein appropriated, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall ever exist in any part of said territory, except for crime, whereof the party shall first be duly convicted. So what is this saying? He wants slavery banned from the Mexican session land, from that territory. So possible multiple choice and short answer tips. What was the impact of the Mexican-American War? And the, your answer will be something along the lines of increased tensions over slavery. This is an example of heated controversy over slavery in the newly acquired territories. It's taken directly from the new curriculum. 
All right, let's look at this famous political cartoon, and this is in response to the Kansas-Nebraska Act. So what do we know? There's lots going on here. We'll break it all down. Well, there are four different Democrats. There's one, there's another, there's three, there's four. And they're standing, two of them are standing on a platform. This is the Democratic platform. You notice this is Kansas and Cuba underneath there as well. So we have Stephen Douglas. He is shoving this black man down the throat of a free soiler with the help of Franklin Pierce, who goes on to become president. Now, the Free Soiler is being held down by James Buchanan, who also goes on to be president, and Lewis Cass, who ran for president. All four of them were Democrats. And again, as I mentioned, a slave is being forced down a throat of a Free Soiler, somebody who was against the expansion of slavery out west. What are the implications of the cartoon? Well, the Kansas-Nebraska Act is seen as negative, and the Democratic Party is the culprit in this cartoon. So what are some possible multiple choice and short answer tips? Well, the Kansas-Nebraska Act was a proposal to settle the issue of slavery and territories. Now, Kansas-Nebraska is specifically mentioned in the new curriculum. Again, the purpose of this was to settle the issue of slavery in the territories. It does not by any means settle it. It overturns the Missouri Compromise, and it leads to popular sovereignty in both Kansas and Nebraska. Again, popular sovereignty is the idea that individuals living in a territory get to decide whether a territory is free or slave. And violence would soon emerge in bleeding Kansas. And this was essentially a mini civil war going on in Kansas in the 1850s. Okay, let's talk about the caning of Charles Sumner. Chances are you've seen this picture as well. So why did this happen? Well, Charles Sumner criticized slavery and its supporters, especially a fellow senator by the name of Andrew Butler. Now, Butler's nephew, Congressman Preston Brooks, took exception to Sumner's speech. He was very upset. He was a member of the House of Representatives. He couldn't believe that Sumner was talking smack about his uncle. So he went in and just beat the living crap out of Sumner. So what are some possible multiple choice and short answer tips? An important thing to realize is that this shows the breaking down of trust between leaders in the national government, and it also demonstrates tensions between North and South. That is a theme of period five. And this helped inspire violent abolitionism. And although John Brown is not specifically mentioned in the new curriculum, this violent abolitionism is. And John Brown heads to Kansas at Potawatomi Creek. He kills five people there and then also later heads to Harper's Ferry to try to incite a slave rebellion. Let's go to the election of 1860 specifically mentioned in the new curriculum. What do we notice about this map? Well, Lincoln is in this pinkish orange color and he wins without carrying a single southern state. Look at these states here. Not a single state that has slavery voted for Lincoln. The Democratic Party was split along sectional lines. In the North, you had individuals voting for Stephen Douglas, who only won one state, Missouri. And in the South, you have Democrats voting for John C. Breckinridge, who was a former vice president. So what are some multiple choice and short answer tips? Definitely, absolutely know that Lincoln campaigned on a free soil platform. This is specifically mentioned which means the non-extension of slavery. So in his eyes, slavery was fine where it is, but he would not allow it to expand. What definitely be familiar with the impact of the election, which is that Southern states began to secede from the Union even before Lincoln became president. On December 20th, 1860, South Carolina was the first state to secede from the Union. Okay, Lincoln wrote this very famous letter to a newspaper editor, Horace Greeley, and he wrote on April 22nd, 1862. And he wrote, I would save the Union. I would save it the shortest way under the Constitution. The sooner the national authority can be restored, the nearer the Union will be the Union as it was. If there be those who would not save the Union unless they could at the same time save slavery, I do not agree with that. If there be those who would not save the Union unless they could at the same time destroy slavery, I do not agree with them. My paramount object in this struggle is to save the Union and is not either to save or to destroy slavery. So what's the message of Lincoln's excerpt here? In the beginning, absolutely know this, the beginning of the Civil War, he sought to preserve the Union at all costs. Slavery came secondary. What are some multiple choice and short answer tips? Be familiar with how Lincoln's war goals changed as time elapsed. Again, in the beginning, he was 
fighting the Civil War to preserve the Union. After the Emancipation Proclamation, the goal of the war starts to change to end slavery. And you see this at the Emancipation Proclamation and also the Gettysburg Address, this higher cause that he is calling for. Okay, here's a political cartoon titled The First Vote from 1867, and this deals with the 15th Amendment. What do we notice? We see African-American males are lining up to vote. And we notice that there is a military official, the third African-American back. And this is an example of the impact of the Emancipation Proclamation, which allowed African-Americans to serve in the military. What are the implications of the cartoon? Black suffrage is seen as positive here. And some multiple choice and short answer question tips. Be familiar with different ways that the Southern states resisted the 15th Amendment, whether it was through literacy tests, poll taxes, grandfather clauses, etc. And what were the impacts of this amendment on the women's rights groups? And that was it essentially split the group. Some women favored black suffrage first. Other women did not favor black suffrage unless it was tied to women's suffrage as well. Okay, continuing with Reconstruction, we have... This political cartoon, which deals with resistance to civil rights. So what do we notice? Well, you have the KKK and the White League. They are joining hands. And underneath their hands, there's a skull and bones, and it says worse than slavery. So what are the implications of the cartoon? The KKK, the White League, and other organizations terrorized African Americans, and they would use violence to meet their goals. You see the KKK member has a gun and knife, and the White League member has a bayonet attached to a rifle. So what are some multiple choice and short answer tips? Organizations were formed to resist the 13th through 15th Amendments, and Southern resistance to radical Republicans and Reconstruction was strong. There were many Southerners who resisted these drastic changes in the South during Reconstruction. Okay, now it's your turn. I will finish up with this last document. I would like you to tell me what is the message of this, as well as what are some possible short answer and multiple choice question tips. On the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1,863, all persons held as slaves within any state in rebellion against the United States shall be forever free. Now therefore I, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, by virtue of the power in me vested as Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy of the United States, do order and designate or appoint the following states as being in rebellion. Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. And I hereby call upon the people so declared to be free to abstain from all violence, unless in necessary self-defense. And I recommend to them that in all cases when allowed, they labor faithfully for reasonable wages. And I further declare and make known that such persons will be received into the armed service of the United States. And upon this act, sincerely believed to be an act of justice, warranted by the Constitution, upon military necessity, I invoke the considerate judgment of mankind and the gracious favor of Almighty God. By the President Abraham Lincoln. This was issued on September 22nd, 1862. So your two questions I would like you to answer is what is the message of the document and what could be multiple choice and short answer test tips for this document. If you'd like to answer this on the video guide, please follow the link in the description. If you would like to answer this for other people to see, please feel free to add that to the comment section as well. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Please subscribe and share this video with others. Please make sure you check out all my videos related to the new curriculum. There are links to them in the description below. And best of luck on all your tests, especially the one in May. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you much. And I will see you next time for more document analysis. Have a good day.